Hello, this is Joey, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use the Roland JDXi. Uh, making this video as if you just got this out of the box. I'm going to show you how to shake off some of the default settings that I wasn't really a fan of, and how to get you immediately making music with this. So let's say you just got it out of the box, you've turned it on, and you're making sure it works. Cool, everything's good to go. Um, let's orient ourselves. So right now, when you have it first turned on, you are in a bank. Your bank is A01, and then um, there's no name for this right now. This is a preset. So if, what that means is that there's a pre-programmed song with selected voices on this. If you push the play button, it'll make a, make a lot of sense. So here we go. This is the first idea they have on the preset. And there's a lot of these ideas already done for you. So this is handy to show you the kind of potential that you can, you can have for this kind of piece of gear. Now these presets um, go on in different banks and for each bank there's a different set of numbers. I think each bank goes up to 64 uh, numbers. It's kind of excessive. But let's get to a blank area, and instead of scrolling through all this until we get to something blank, let's uh, let's just start from the top, that A01, and push Shift, and this is going to allow us to jump uh, to the next letter bank. So Shift, and then plus, you B bank, C bank, D bank, and then I have some things saved in E already, I have some things saved in F. I'm just going to start on G01. This is a complete blank slate. If you push play, there's nothing there. So it's our job now to figure out what voices we want to use and also um, what drum pattern we want to program, all that. So you're in a fresh state here. You can you can don't have to worry about any of the presets. You can come up with your own um, piece of music right now from here. Um, the other thing I really liked to get rid of <laughs> when I first got it was the click. Uh, every time you push play, for me, my default, the click was always on um, and it kind of just not how I really compose um, and I'll show you how to get rid of that real quick so to get rid of the click that you might notice that's playing um, you can go to menu the menu button here it's going to show you system um, you can scroll through this and see different ideas going on but just stick on system and push enter again and then in here you'll use your cursor and you'll see information we're looking for the click information. So keep going over and then we'll find click mode. So you'll probably have it set when you first get it. I think it's on play and record, um, or I think it's on just record only. Um, you can use the, the pattern value button to get it to off. That's what I wanna use and that's what I selected. So I, I switch it to off. Um, and then from there you push enter. That's, it should already save it, but I just always push enter after my selections. And then go back to the menu button, to, and we're gonna walk ourselves out of here. And then there we are, we're back to our, our blank slate. Then from here, uh, to get an idea just started, I'm gonna go to my drum channel. So imagine like a four track. You have a synth voice, synth voice, drum track, and then analog synth. So it's almost like these three voices that you can layer on top of each other. For drums, I'm just gonna select that. I'm gonna use the first option there. And then you can go up the keyboard to get different parts of the drum kit. Hi-hats, all that. Um, so I'm gonna select the bass drum. And what I'm gonna do is a four to four kick. So I have that here, here, here. And I'm utilizing the sequence pattern up here where I can get four to the floor. And you can kind of adjust it from there. I, I can even push play while I'm making this pattern and you'll see when I want to come back in. So there we go, I've got my four to the floor foundation. And then let's say I want to add a snare on these two beats here. I'll select my snare. And so you hear the kick drum going off. We go back and revisit that kick drum. You'll see it's still there and you can take away what you don't want. You can put it back in. So I'm gonna go to that snare. And I want it on these beats here. 
we do one there. Same thing with a hi-hat. So I selected the hi-hat and now I'm just going through. So I'm happy with that. Okay, so I've done my drums. Let's say, see how it's looping up here? You get one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and it stays on that. That means it's a one loop over and over and again. Let's say I wanna do like a, I wanna do that times four. What we can do is go to menu and go through our, instead of entering system, go to your cursor and what we're looking for is program length. And you'll see here, program, or pattern length, I'm sorry, pattern length, and then we'll push enter. And it's gonna say, we're on one measure right now. You can use this plus to go to two, or you can go all the way up to four, which is what I prefer. And you push enter, and it's gonna ask you with copying. What that means is that beat we just did, that standard four of the four pattern, that we just did, that means it's gonna take it on that one and apply it to the three others that we're adding on after it. So yes, I want that to be copied. So now when we play it, pay attention up here, it's gonna show us second, third, fourth, and it's gonna start over again. And then one last thing I wanna do before I wanna revisit drums or get out of the drums is I'm going to add a simple little fill to let myself know that the phrase is starting over. Um, in order to do that, I, I don't, I want to have it on snare. Okay. And then I'm going to push shift and then you'll see this come up here. This is that first one we did. And these are the three that we copied. So it's going to do one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three. And this is where I want the fill. I'm going to hold shift, push that, and then it's gonna show me where my snares hit. And so let's say I just wanna add just those two on the end there. So I'm gonna double tap play to start me at the beginning of that phrase. And now we'll hear. That fill that we just did. Great. Now the drums are done. I'm gonna double tap play to get me at the beginning. Now let's pick, so that's on the drum channel. Let's pick a synth voice to work with. Uh, digital synth one, I'm gonna start with a pad. Let's do something like. Not the most exciting thing, but this is just good foundation for everybody. So. Um, we'll just play along to that beat we just made. And let's say we want to slow it down. You have your tempo knob. Let's take it down to 100. And right now I'm just playing over the beat. There's no recording going on. Okay, so I'm really happy with that. So I want to record that. What we're gonna do is push real time record. It's ready, and what that means is we're gonna push play, and it's not gonna record us until we play something. So I'll push record time, or real time record, and then push play. And now it's just waiting for me to play something. I'm gonna come in after that fill happens. I'm not, that's not being recorded. These higher notes aren't being recorded. So you get a pass to play that. So now I've got a pad going. Let me add um, something on the arpeggio side of things. So in order to do an arpeggio, you have this right here. I'm gonna push on and then I'm gonna select 
um, a sound I want. So I'm gonna pause the, the background for now. I'm on digital synth two. I've got my arpeggiator on, and I'm going to do something in the lead section. So we were going. That's a little too much. Let's see here. So yeah, I'm in the lead section, but let's say that lead is a little too strong for the feel we're going for. You can select with the tone different um, voices here. So, and sometimes you can just hold down that and you can even scroll through while you're doing that. So I like this saw lead for what we have already established and let's say uh, I don't want to do the arpeggiator you can always turn it off I may not be doing that we might do another video with that but you get the idea if you want to record with it now I'm going to record another voice I'm going to do it I'm going to do it where I mess up and show you how to delete a mistake so we're back here I'm on digital synth 2 I'm going to arm myself ready for recording and I'm just going to do a simple melody and mess it up on purpose. On purpose. Oh gosh. So it started off great. And then it gets awful. Alright, so to delete that take, we're going to push shift. So make sure you select it on digital synth 2. That one we just did. Push shift, hold down shift, and then there's an erase button. You use erase, it's gonna ask you digital synth two, and you don't have to keep holding shift. Um, you can push enter, yes, it was that one that I messed up on. Erase the pattern, yes I do. Great, and now you can listen to it like nothing ever happened. Cool, so I'm gonna double tap play again to start me from the beginning. And then, yeah, I'm gonna go in and do a take. So I just push play and I push real time record. And I'm gonna come in when that fill happens. myself for recording and do this bass part. And there we go. I have a completed idea with all four of my parts. And now I want to save this. What I'll do is push stop, or double tap just on the beginning again, and you're going to go to, you're gonna hold shift, and then you're gonna select right. So shift right, it wants you to enter a program name, and it should have a little, yeah, underline, that's asking you to change this letter, like you would in an old arcade game. Um, and so you can select which letter you wanna change, and by using the cursor, so I want to start on that first one, and I want to change it to J, uh, you know, just Junior. And if you just want to do Junior, you can push Shift and then hold the cursor down, and then it gets rid of everything else as you tap along. So I'm happy with that. Uh, this is my baby. It's Junior. So I'm going to push Enter, and then it's going to ask you what bank. It's going to do the bank you went to. So remember at the beginning we selected G01 because we knew it was a clean slate. I'm going to push enter because that's where I want to keep it. Uh, program write, like the last end all be all. Yes, I want to write it there. It's going to write it. 
and then there you go. You have it. It won't. It's saved now. So if you went up to G2, there's nothing there. But if you went to G1, you've got that piece of music. Now, if you want to um, kind of turn this more into a song with some form, you can mute different channels or you can unselect them. So let's say you want it to, so right now if I play it, you can see it's going, but nothing's happening. Well, what we can do is start off with just the pad by holding shift and then clicking the voice you want. And then just ease in your different voices. and drums come at the same time. Great, so that's um, the crash course on the JDXi. I really hope this helps out. It took me a lot of different videos I had to go through and a lot of just experimentation to kind of figure out just how to get your ideas down. So there's so much that can be done on this piece of gear. But this is definitely the fundamental of what makes it my favorite piece of gear to write music on. And I was really happy to share this with you guys. If there's any questions or anything I can clarify, please let me know in the comments. Um, I'm making a lot of music with this guy and I'm probably going to make more tutorials using the Roland JDXi2 to kind of go over different sounds and different tips and tricks along the way. So I hope this video was helpful. It was a pleasure making it. Please leave a comment and please subscribe. I'll talk to you later. Bye.